Hey fam, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nino Sazon, aka DJ9, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Rain One and the questions you should be asking yourself before you make the purchase. So on this channel, we talk a lot about DJ related stuff, tips and tricks, gig vlogs, and of course, product reviews. So if you like that kind of content, please help me out by subscribing down below and don't forget to like this video. Okay, so the Rain One is an awesome controller. It's been out for over a year now. So it's been out for a while. I decided to pull the trigger and pick it up. I've had it only for a week, but I've used it already at a wedding and I've played with it so many times, so it's dope. There are a lot of cool features on this controller, but the thing that drew me to it were the spinning platters. Now, they mimic the turntables. I'm getting into turntablism and scratching and stuff, so it just made sense. It's pretty much like a turntable setup, but in a mini controller package. With all those good things about the controller, there are also a couple of cons when it comes to the controller that you might wanna think about before getting it. So one of the first things I noticed when picking up this unit is that it's a very heavy controller. I mean, um, those motorized platters, of course, we're gonna add weight to it. They have to put metal in it and uh, the technology to make them spin, of course, is gonna add to the weight. So it is heavier. It's actually the same weight as my Pioneer DDJ SZ, which is massive. It was meant to be a little bit heavier than your normal controller. It's not a deal breaker by all means. Uh, just putting it out there that it's a little heavy for its size. Another thing that I found on this controller is that it only has two channels, only two decks. So if you're used to spinning with four decks, or used to having two extra channels just for other inputs and stuff so you can plug in your iPad or, or iPhone, you're out of luck. It's only a two deck controller. At this price point, eh, it's kind of lacking. Another thing that I can see which is a downside to this controller is that the pads, although they're really good quality pads and they light up, but in direct sunlight, I can imagine it not being bright enough so you wouldn't be able to see the lights on the actual pads if it was bright or if you're in direct sunlight. So um, that's gonna be a downside. You're gonna have to look at the screen to look at all the cues to make sure that you follow the cue points properly there. The biggest complaint that DJs have been having with this machine is that it's only software effects. Right? There's no hardware effects, there's no dedicated buttons for the horn or the siren. It does make sense because the software effects on Serato, they're okay, but they're not great. If there were dedicated hardware effects, it just sounds better. A lot of DJs have been griping about that and maybe in their next controller, they will keep that in mind. So another drawback I hear DJs complaining about is that they think the Rain One is too pricey. It retails 1500 US and just under 2000 Canadian. And they're saying that for two channels and uh, no hardware effects, too pricey. They're even saying that the DDJ 1000 or the SRT is a far superior controller than the Rain One. Plus, it's $300 cheaper huh? than the Rain One. And it has four channels and every other feature that the Rain One doesn't. I guess that's subject to your personal opinion. Um, it depends on your perception of what's worth it, but it is something to think about. Now, with all that being said, there are a few questions that you need to ask yourself if you're thinking about picking up this controller. First question, what kind of DJ are you? If you're a turntablist, a hip hop DJ, likes to scratch a lot, then obviously this controller is for you. The motorized platters are just made for turntablists and it feels like you're on a turntable setup. It's the closest thing to a turntable setup in my opinion. It's just a small compact version of that. So if you're a DJ who only likes to mix, who doesn't do a lot of scratching, um, beat juggling or anything like that, who transitions from one song to another with uh, using effects, um, maybe you do a lot of dance music, EDM. Maybe this is not for you. 
The spinning platters aren't going to do anything for you. <laughs> Maybe they'll screw up your mixes actually if, if you just accidentally nudge them. <laughs> but there are a lot of better options out there such as the DDJ SX line, the, the SZ line, the Pioneer DDJ 1000, the SRT, right? Those are excellent options. Now if you're a beginner DJ, I don't recommend you picking up this machine just because it doesn't make sense. It's too expensive. I recommend something smaller and user friendly, maybe something around $300 range or, or lower, maybe like a SB or a Newmark Scratch Pro, something along those lines. So just in case DJing is not for you, you can always just sell it and it's not too hard on the pockets, right? Now for all those OG DJs who have not made the jump yet to a controller, we are still using turntables. This is made specifically for you guys because it mimics pretty much a turntable setup just in a miniature controller version, right? So make the jump guys, scratch DJs. If you're on the fence with getting this thing, try it out first at your local guitar center or if your buddy has it, try it out. You're gonna love it, I'm telling you. The feel of the vinyl, the seven inch platters, it's just, really really smooth and the crossfader is dope i'm telling you get on this you guys will love it once you guys try it the next question is are you upgrading what are you upgrading from and uh, why the rain one okay that was like three questions but i'm gonna put them all together kind of <laughs> now i'm just gonna give you my take on this and where i'm coming from i'm coming from a, a ddj sz the pioneer you guys know that was the flagship controller a few years ago and it has pretty much everything that a club mixer needs um four channels great mic inputs great hardware effects software effects and you can scratch on that thing right it's not as good as this with basic scratching you can do some stuff with it that's actually where i started scratching i learned the basic stuff on the ddj sz and coming from that uh, for five years going to this it is a little bit of a shocker and i am gonna miss the four channels the hardware effects that horn when you press the button and it I'm gonna miss that <laughs> you know if it's not worth to move from what you have right now to this maybe you should think twice right maybe you should stick to that or maybe get something along those lines that's same as yours but maybe a little bit of an upgrade maybe the DDJ 1000 the SRT will do it for you guys that's pretty much on the same level as the rain one right now those are the new ones that are out and the top controllers right now on the market um, so maybe that's a better option for you guys think about it right weigh your options now I know how it sounds after all I said it sounds like I'm bashing the rain one but that's far from the truth. I actually really love this controller. Oh yes, daddy. I really love it. <laughs> um, here's a little clip of me uh, just scratching a little bit last night. <laughs> have it guys just my thoughts on the rain one controller and who is catered for I hope this video helped you to make an informed decision on whether or not the rain one is the controller for you keep in mind though that the rains mandate has always been geared towards the scratch DJs the hip-hop DJs the turntablists it shows with their mixers and it's no different with the rain one controller that's just their market. I don't think they're gonna change their mandate anytime soon. Rain equals quality and this is an awesome controller. 
So in conclusion, I think the rain is catered for the scratch DJ turntablist specifically. And with that being said, if I helped you make a decision on whether or not you're gonna get this controller, let me know in the comments if you're gonna get it. If you already have this controller, let me know what you love about it and if you love it just as much as I do. If you got something from this video, please don't forget to like this video and also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe. A lot more videos coming your way. I'll see you guys in the next one, okay? This is DJ9 signing off.